so underneath this tarp is a new piece of equipment that I'm adding to the shop and I want to share it with you. Now that's not going to be a plug and play piece. It's going to require a little bit of work to get it up and going. Work that I actually enjoy doing. So is it really work? I'll let you be the judge. Let me get this tarp where it comes off in a dramatic reveal so it's satisfying and I'll share it with you. I'm excited to add it to the shop really. Are you ready? This is a really big 12 by 54 Dual, actually, it's a Spanish made ENIAC machine, vertical milling machine, 30 taper spindle, power feeds in every direction. I'm excited to have it. And overall, it's in pretty decent condition. It does have one major wear spot on it that's going to have to be repaired, but it is light years better than the milling machine that I currently have. I'll just put that out there because the one that I currently have is complete garbage. This thing is not complete garbage, just partial and uh, will require some work and I'll share it with you. But first let's go over this machine and, and I'll show you its features. So the table on this machine is in surprisingly good condition. It's got one spot on it where somebody got into it with an end mill, but other than that, other than your common table dings, it's in extremely good condition, surprisingly nice. 40 taper spindle, like I mentioned, which is a really good thing because I can use any 40 taper tooling or like this, use a collet holder, 40 taper to TG100 and swap out just the collets, which I have a set of, just like you'd swap out collets R8s in your standard Bridgeport style machine. Now this is not, unfortunately, a variable speed head. This is just like your J style Bridgeport where you have to swap out the belts to change the spindle speed, which is not that big a deal, to be honest, but you know, it'd be nicer if it was a variable speed. But check out how large the headstock is on this thing. It's massively large. Power down feed, just like just like a bridge port, and uh, power feeds in every direction. Let me give you the walk around of this machine just quickly, show you some of the things, some of its features, right? And uh, then we'll get into what's wrong with it. I'm also gonna get this thing off of the machine rollers that it's on really quick and set it on some adjustable feet. So let's quickly go over the controls on the front of this machine. So all push button electric power feeds. So you can choose your direction of travel through these buttons here a little electric motor and a gearbox here to control the rate of feed, X, Y, and Z. And there's your clutch for your rapid traverse and your handles that engage you know, the, the direction of travel. This machine also has uh, up front controls in the operator position instead of you know, having to go to the end of the table because this table so long, if you were trying to dial something in right at the vise, you, know, you can come right up front and move the table both right and left. Uh, through this little handle right here, which is super handy, uh, especially if your arms aren't a mile long. And then the rest of the controls are basically the same as your standard bridge port. You got your knee up and down manual, you know, your Y axis on your, on your saddle. Um, and that's pretty much it. Electronic end stops and everything works. Controls for the sump. Um, the pump does kick on. I have not looked in the foot of this machine in the coolant sump. I'm actually kind of scared to, um, to be honest. Everything's sticky on this machine and kind of gummy, uh, but you know it is what it is. It just needs cleaned up, I think. Um, they used coolant on this machine, so it just totally gummed up everywhere. But you know, needs a good cleaning. But let me get this thing off of the the machine rollers that are that it that it's on and then we'll uh, show you around the rest of it. So let's lift this machine up off of my rollers because I'm gonna need these. I'm gonna be moving my equipment around in the next couple of weeks and those cannot be stuck up under this machine and I'm gonna temporarily set it on these uh, machine leveling pads that were sent to me from Brett Myers out of Canada and I really appreciate those. Those are super nice. Cast iron, two wedges and you just tighten or loosen uh, to, to either raise or lower the machine to accurately level it, which is nice. Now these are not gonna be under this machine permanently. I'm gonna put these under the shaper when it comes time. But for now, I need to get these out. And this is new. It is a toe jack. If you're not familiar with a toe jack, 
it lifts from the toe. It's just a bottle jack with a special lug here that lifts from down low because obviously, you know, machines are always set close to the ground and you can't get anything other than a pry bar up under there to lift a lot of times. And that's where a toe jack comes in handy. The handle on this thing also swivels more than 180 degrees, which is nice because you may be up against a wall when you need to lift the machine. Al sent this to me, which I 100% appreciate. This makes life so much easier when it comes to moving all this equipment around. And if you're wondering, this machine actually came from Al. <laughs> Same auction that the Dewalt drill press came from. And I appreciate it. Uh, he's quite the guy. But I've been wanting one of these for a long time. So I'm excited to have it. So thank you, Brett, and thank you, Al. So this lifts this no problem, and this is a heavy mill. I'm gonna lower these down as low as they'll go. I don't wanna jack that up any higher than I have to. So because this machine is so tall already, it won't be sitting on these feet. Uh, like I said, these are gonna go under the shaper. Um, and I'll probably make some custom feet for this thing, just some low profile. So a little bit of good news on this machine first, and then I'll tell you the really bad news because it does have it does have a really uh, serious issue. Now, good news is, man, the lead screws have extremely low backlash in them. No more than I would expect from any Acme threaded lead screw machine. Maybe twenty or thirty thousandths. Eh, yeah, thirty thousandths or so. Not much uh, in both X and Y. Uh, tabletops in really good shape and. The main casting uh, surfaces are in really good shape. The problem with this machine is that the saddle and the or the saddle and the knee ways are in really poor condition. Got some heavy scoring uh, between these two. Uh, now I think that was either caused by just lack of oiling altogether, or the oiler stopped up. Potentially, it could have lived its life. I don't know what this machine done in the production environment. Could have moved back and forth, and that's all it did. Who knows? Um, the plan for the repair on this machine, I'll show you these ways so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, it'll be obvious when you see them. The plan for the repair is to strip this down, send this bare knee casting and saddle casting to Cash Masters in uh, Wisconsin, have him regrind the knee and potentially regrind, I haven't seen it yet, the bottom of the saddle, turkite the bottom of the saddle, and scrape it back in true. If that's all this machine needs, you know, I'll be able to use this thing from now on. Put a DRO on it, it'll be a nice machine. But if I run into any other major issues, I probably won't fix this machine. I'll pass it on to someone else and you know, let them tackle it if they're interested in it. But you know, we'll see. We're gonna tear into it. I'll show you what's, what's the deal. We're just gonna get started on the teardown today though. Let me show you the damage on this machine. So check out how bad the scoring is on the ways of the knee of this machine. Some of the worst I've ever seen, and I expect that the bottom of the saddle will look a lot like uh, 
the knee here. Now there's a lot of cast iron here. This can be ground flat. Uh, the dovetails actually feel surprisingly good. No scoring or anything on them. Actually, they look really good as well. There's no perceivable wear by eye uh, on any of it. I'm sure there is some, but you know, all this will be refitted, ground and refitted. Now I said Wisconsin, but actually it's going to Minnesota to be reground. So I'm going to just get started this week tearing this thing down and then assessing other parts of it. And if there's nothing critical that I run into, you know, the repair will happen. And I'm kind of excited to get into it. Uh, not done much uh, machine refitting, so it's kind of exciting for me to, to do something like this. So the old parts washer is going to get a workout with this thing. Let's see why I decided I'd go ahead and get that thing functional. Now I'm not going to have this machine tore down any longer than what it needs to be. So I'm going to try to knock this out. Um, now I can't control how long it takes to get the table or get the saddle reground, but I can control how long it takes me to disassemble and reassemble. And I'm going to try to make that as quick as possible. Just slide off there. Okay, snap ring. That looks like a tapered pin, and that is the small end. So we'll drive that out, hopefully. Drive it out from the small side. Yep, that come out easy. And there's the pin, bigger on one end than it is on the other. And hopefully that'll come off. Okay, then we just got a, a tapered roller bearing preset locking ring, and that's easy enough. So the disassembly on the other end of the table was basically the same, except for instead of a tapered roller bearing for adjust, adjustment of backlash, this end had a, just a plain bearing. And I did have some trouble, well I haven't got it off actually, uh, getting that tapered roller bearing off the other side, but it all comes apart uh, one way or another, you'll see. So in theory this tapered roller bearing should be free especially with me heating it to expand it a bit, of the lead screw that runs through it. That's just what adjusts the backlash that you set uh, in the lead screw between the two handles. But in practice, it's not coming off. Um, I eventually give up, um, trying not to damage it, although they're cheap. Uh, you know, I end up taking off the whole bracket, just settling on taking it apart in a chunk instead of in individual pieces that are much easier to clean. Sometimes you run into stuff like this that give you give you problems, but that's part of the game, I guess.
So here I'm pulling out the large tapered gib. Just a big wedge that allows you to tighten the table, the fit of the table, to the saddle of this machine. So here I'm attaching a table lifting bracket that I had made for the K&T mill some time back. It fit this table uh, just the same. Just making sure that it's centered on the table. And I'm going to use the engine hoister, the cherry picker, to just lift the table off this machine. So pulling a table off of a machine tool is always kind of exciting for me. That's a big heavy piece. You just never know what the condition's going to be until you get it off. It's kind of like a roll of the dice. You know, is it going to be good or bad? And they're heavy and awkward and all that other stuff that makes it kind of exciting as well. As long as you balance things out and give it some forethought, it's usually it's very doable. So I just use the cherry picker. And it works pretty good. There we go. Table's off. Let's get a look at the saddle. Underneath the table, anyway. I'm trying not to drown you guys out with light, but I want you to be able to see. I don't glare everything to death, either. A little bit of scoring there. Scoring there. I mean, that's a small area, uh, really, on such a large surface, so I mean, it's not the end of the world. But there's quite a bit there. But like I said, that's not that big a deal. Won't hurt a thing as long as it's cleaned up properly, kept lubed from now on, and the wear is not excessive. But since this is going to get ground, I'll probably check this anyway. I mean, it wouldn't be that hard to, to run this top surface. If you look at the forward controls here, this shaft is a little bit bent. The handle's good. It's not the handle. It's the, the shaft itself, a little bit bent, so that'll have to be noted and uh, straightened. Probably be easy enough to do.
So all the wiring has to come out of the knee of this thing. All these wires are red, which is not very helpful, but at least they did go through the trouble of labeling them all. So what I'm going to do is just make a quick drawing in a notebook of the layout of the switches and the potential uh, connections and its corresponding uh, number because they are all numbered, which is nice. And everything works on this machine. All the electronics function as they should, so as long as everything goes back together as it is, you know, it should work just fine. So that's nice that they're all labeled because I assumed I was going to have to do this work myself. So I'm sure that looks like gibberish to an electrician, but it's just the layout of the wires on here. And uh, this is the loom from the machine, the wires coming in, and they attach to the ones that are double circled. So it's pretty easy, really. That's the way I'm going to remember it. So I've got the table of this milling machine hanging on a scale here. Guess in the comments how much you think this table weighs, and I'll pin the closest guess in the comments. Uh, the old double set screws. That's something you gotta watch out for. A set screw on top of a set screw. That's caused a lot of people a lot of problems before. All that does is hold that in. There's a ball and a spring. So all the castings on this machine are really, really thick and seem to be reinforced really well. You can see the ribs inside of the bottom of the saddle here. And everything seems like a pretty decent design. I'm pleasantly surprised at the quality of this machine. This machine also has a central oiling system, which is pretty nice and seems to hit all the really critical points. The problem is most people don't ever use them, but this one has a nice one. And once this thing's back together, it should last a lifetime if maintained properly. So I can almost guarantee you that I'm the only one that's ever been in here, and I look down and I find these two nuts just sitting loose down in the bottom of the saddle here. And I'm thinking, where did those come from? I didn't take off anything that had uh, you know, nuts on it. And I got to looking, and I can see the oil stains there. They used them as standoffs to hold that oil distribution manifold up off the casting here. So that's a factory job right there. Two nuts instead of actual standoffs. I mean, if it works, it works, right? <laughs> but it's kind of odd. That's where those come from. Well, unfortunately, that's as far as I'm going to get on the disassembly of this mill this week anyway. I'm out of time. And I was really hoping to get the saddle off this thing so we can see how bad the bottom of this thing is. It could not be as bad as what I'm expecting, but, you know, it probably is. And... I'm not really concerned, to be honest, about how bad it is because this is cast iron and as long as it's not broke, it can be ground and you can apply turkite to build the surface back up and potentially make this mill more accurate than the day it came out of the factory. It's just a question of whether you want to go through all that work and is it worth it to you. But fortunately, I enjoy this kind of work, so I'm kind of excited. Um, I'm not a machine rebuilder, although I do have friends that do that, so when it comes time to get this thing fitted and scraped in, I'll have to call on some somebody who has more expertise in that field than I do, although I do know some about it. I'm 
don't know that I'm completely confident to tackle the whole thing by myself. So we'll see. Um, this gearbox has got to come off. The front, the whole front of this machine's got to come off, and the crossfeed nut's got to come off in order for this to come completely off. And then I got to worry about getting the knee off of this thing, which is going to be a big job. We'll have to rotate the head around and stuff. But that's it, I think. Now, I put out two videos this week, so watch them both. Um, subscribe to the channel as well, because otherwise you won't get notifications and you may miss a video that I post, which wouldn't be good. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Huge thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who supported me on this project. It is much appreciated. And that's it. So thanks for watching, and hopefully I will see you next week. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own. Waiting for the sun to blossom